Hey, what's up? Hello, everyone. Welcome into Fantasy Film Ball, the show where we turn movies into sports and sports into something we don't talk about here. My name is Matt. My name is Dill, and today we are doing our first post can Oscar predictions. We are doing some big, big categories. So, if you're new here to the channel, hi, welcome in. Drop a like, drop a subscription. It helps us out. And you know, if you you know stick around for a little bit, maybe you find something, learn something, or you just have a good old time. But let's not waste <laughs> any time diving into these categories. Matt, wh where do you want to start today? Let's start with Best Picture, the Big Kahuna, the Big Kahuna Burger of awards best picture and you're dropping your best picture list now you haven't done it for like two months now so let us know what what do you got going on here so a lot a lot has changed we've seen some movies we have heard some reactions and we just had one of the biggest film festivals drop some brand new contenders on the scene like i mentioned a little bit before if you are new here matt brought up a great point last year which led us to the eventual winner of everything ever all, all at once where you know your winner kind of has to be someone that hasn't been on the scene before and between mm -hmm. three and five your best picture nominees should be from first time nominations and guess what i have a winner who hasn't won before and i have five nominees that have not been nominated before so number one i haven't changed yet i haven't had a reason to change i saw past lives will a24 go back to back probably not but i don't really see a better alternative at the moment there's some movies that look really good on paper but when's the last time a movie that looks great on paper actually went on to win this award <laughs> 2015 it's been a hot minute so maybe this is the year that we come back to that but me I'm not predicting that. Past lives, number one. Then we get the big hitters that, you know, everyone's predicting. Killers of the Flower Moon at number two. The Color Purple at number three. Dune Part 2 at number four. And Oppenheimer at number five. These are ones that everyone's predicting to either win or get nominated. I don't really see the winning angle for those four movies. I know that you do for one of them. I, I could get there eventually. But uh, at this moment, I feel like they're four pretty good in the boat to get nominated. I mean, they come from three different studios. Warner Brothers has two of them. And they're their biggest pushes of the year. Unless they go really off the rails, they should be good. But we've already had eyes on one of these movies. And people have said it's great. Yeah, I mean, I don't have one of these in my top ten. Which is, that's a fun one. Um, I personally just don't have a lot of faith in Oppenheimer as a, uh, uh, best picture player. I think that it's going to underwhelm at the box office. I think that it's, uh, going to be good, but not get like a mate. I think it's going to get like 70 to 80 on Metacritic and underperform a little bit in box office, which is going to lead to it kind of, um, underperforming with awards. So I, I see your angle and I see everyone's angle for having it in, uh, best picture, but I just don't have it there. Otherwise, I've got everything that you have here. Past Lives, great pick for a number one. It's very possible that it happens. It's the little indie that could. Uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, we have reviews for this now. It's been seen. People love it. Uh, but I, I just don't see any world where this can win best picture because it seems like every single review that I've seen of this movie is, it's great, but... Um, and then saying, like, it's not Scorsese's best which is, is a killer when it comes to mm -hmm. uh, getting a win for Best Picture. You need to be the best movie that that person's done. Um, Dune, Color Purple, yeah, two Warner Brothers. It's great. Great picks there. Color Purple's my winner. Um, I think it has a great argument to win. I like seeing it here at number three for you. Uh, Dune Part 2 also, that's just locked in so many categories that like you can just slot it in here. I mean, we have a whole video on the Color Purple trailer where Matt makes his case for why that movie should win. So, you know, maybe go check that out. But I do have two Warner Brothers movies in my top five. So it's time that we have our second A24. This one comes out of Cannes, the zone of interest. This is going to be one of our international representations in Best Picture. Spoiler alert, <laughs> I do have another one here. But this one is the one I think will perform a little bit better across the board. I know Jonathan Glazer's never really made a movie for the Academy. But this movie seems like it's going to hit some specific categories, which will help bolster its case into best picture and then at number seven is the last one i have from a returning nominee that's not true i have one more but number seven is poor things from searchlight i know there's so much against this movie but i'm not ready to get rid of it just yet i think i'm gonna ride with this movie until it comes out and then once it comes out i could lose it i could raise it higher you know the same case i made for bardo and avatar last year where one of those worked out one of those didn't and who knows maybe that same case with poor things this year works out in my favor yeah, I, I took Poor Things out for a while, and I put it back in, and the reason is that I just don't see 
how Searchlight could get Next Goal Wins in. I think mm-hmm. Next Goal Wins is much closer to an Empire of Light. It's not going to play Venice. It could play Telluride TIFF, uh, and it could do very well at TIFF, but unless it wins the People's Choice Award, I think that critics will try to kill it. Um, I, I really, really think critics are going to try to put the hit out on this one the way that they did with The Greatest Beer Run Ever, for example, where The Greatest Beer Run Ever was not a great movie, but it was like, that was like a, it should have been like 50s in Metacritic, like 28 is kind of ridiculous for yeah. that. So we have my top seven right there. We have representation from Searchlight, A24, Universal, Warner Brothers, and Apple. So it's time that, you know, I get everyone's favorite streamer who has yet to miss Best Picture every year that they tried since they first got in, and that is Netflix. And I finally have my representation from Netflix. We've waited months. We've talked about, oh, is it Rustin? Is it Maestro? Is it Nyad? No, it's like you said, it's May, December. I, s- I called this. You did. You did. I, I, did. I was like I was like it makes sense. It makes sense. So I'm not going to put it in yet, but once they do buy it, it goes right up into my top 10, so from number 11 up to number 8. I don't really it's see the case for this to win a lot. Too. I don't see the case for this to win. I think any category, but it's one of those movies that's just going to hit like picture, like actress, supporting actor, screenplay, maybe a tech or two. I kind of feel like this is this year's tar where it's going to do really well with critics all the way leading up and people are like oh is this number four is this number three and then it kind of dies right at the end it's like oh it was like six or it was like five the whole time along i could see may december doing extremely extremely well a lot of the people out of can saying like oh it's too campy for the oscars like bitch <laughs> we just had everything everywhere all at once win best picture you're telling me that something is too blank for the oscars there's no such thing as too blank insert here for the oscars the oscars just care if it's good speaking of a fun movie with good direction good editing and a great script we have amazon's representee in best picture this year air from ben affleck we've all seen this movie no one hates this movie. And I think that's this movie's strength. Like, no one's giving this a five. No one's giving this a four. They may give it a seven, but hey, get a bunch of sevens, get a bunch of eights. You got yourself a top 15 type player. And at the end of the day, there's a certain demographic that will love this movie, that will push it through. And Amazon, I know they're not the best campaigner, but we've seen in the past when they really try for something, they get into the conversation. I think Air's biggest thing is if it stays in the conversation, it's in. It just can't manage to get its way out of the conversation. The thing that has been making me a little bit nervous about Air lately is thinking about how a lot of these early releases that pop back up late in the year, uh, how they usually work is that they have a lot of support in below the line ca- categories, right? Like think about uh, Mad Max Fury Road popped up because it had a lot of below the line support. Get Out, same thing. Uh, there was a lot of that below the line support and critical support, right? And Air. It's got, like, three nominations, four max, mm-hmm. and that that makes me think that it might struggle to get back into the conversation later in the year, but it is still possible. I mean, um, I definitely still have it in my top ten, but uh, I, I'm definitely a little bit nervous about that. And we do know some people that, that hate this movie, for sure. Uh, there are quite a few that I've seen, but that said, it doesn't need to be universally loved. It just needs to be loved by dads. Because there are always dad movies in the top 10. Last year we had Elvis. We had All Quiet. We had Top Gun. We had, I mean, Avatar is debatably a, uh, a, Avatar is debatably a dad movie. Uh, hey, I feel like there's one more. There's one more that I'm forgetting that was also a dad movie. Fablemans. Fablemans is a dad movie as well. It's a dad movie that anyone can like, but it's a dad movie. So I feel like you need to have a balance between like the artsy, criticky movies and like the movies for your mom and dad, uh, mm-hmm. and Air is a movie for your mom and dad. Speaking of mom and dad movies, I am leaving one out of my top ten. That is another one of those like up in that alley. And I think honestly, this nine slots between these two movies, I just have more faith in Air at this moment than I do in the holdovers that I have at number eleven from Focus. Yeah, I know Universal and Focus aren't the same thing. They can get two in like last year when they had Tar and the Fablemans. But right now, I have it just out. But once reviews start coming out for this. I'll probably bring it back in. But I'm going to hold it out for the moment because at number 10, I do want to get Neon in here. And they just got the Palm d'Or for the fourth year in a row with Anatomy of a Fall. And I know this may be a little bit of a stretch. It's it's not that type of movie. But people said that about Triangle last year. Triangle got its way in. And this is just more of a, a swing right now. We're in June. There's room for swings. And I'd rather swing 
in this than say like, oh, this is never going to happen. Like I did with Triangle last year and ended up being wrong for like eight months. Having anatomy in, I think, is is a very strong call. I, it's risky because it's one of those things where it's like, are we just saying this because Neon did it last year? Like, is this another one of those? But I, I think that being like a courtroom drama, it's going to appeal to the same kind of audience that uh, All Quiet did in the sense that it's like, this is kind of a movie for your mom and your dad, where mm -hmm. it's a court drama, it's a thriller that's going to be like, it is apparently just like a thrilling airport read type movie that's just incredibly well done. So this one has some things that Triangle didn't have. It's widely, widely, really loved. Uh, it has a crazy lead performance, which seems like it's going to be in Best Actress. Um, and yeah, it, it just, it, it has, it has so much going for it, I think, at this point. I personally have it just outside my top 10. Um, but I think it's very possible that we could see this being the first year we have two non-English language movies in Best Picture. It's going to happen eventually, but I'm going to be honest here. The holdovers, which you mentioned, I've got in instead of Oppenheimer, um, because I, I have that, like, the holdovers is my universal push in my mm -hmm. mind. And the other thing I have instead of uh, what you have here, instead of Anatomy of a Fall, I have Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. I'll just briefly say, I've been saying for a little bit now that if this movie gets the same level of critic buzz or higher critic buzz than the first one, and if it gets intense box office, this could be something to watch out for. And it does, it has the same critic reviews as the first one, some better, some worse, uh, but I think mostly the consensus is it is just as good as the first one, and it is on track to maybe be the big, and it is on track to maybe be the biggest movie of the year, if not the year, probably of the summer. Uh, and that to me says that this is going to be a cultural phenomenon that will really catch on. And like, God damn, this movie is so exceptional. Honestly, I think the only thing riding against it is that it's a part one. Yeah, I, I guess for the biggest movie of the year, I would say this is still tracking far behind Mario. But for the summer, I'll, I'll give you that. Um, my case for Anatomy making it over Spider-Man is I have Anatomy right now in picture. I have it in screenplay. I have it in actress. And I have it in international. Spider-Man right now has an animated. And I'm not really seeing another category. I know this is the case for Adapted. Adapted. Sound. Adapted. Score. Sound. A lot of people had issues with the sound mixing, so for me, that kind of knocks that down. There's no real song. Score, maybe, maybe not. There's a, a, not really a lot of love for Daniel Pemberton in that branch. He's been snubbed three times, arguably, so this could be number four. And I just see a very uphill battle, but if we go later in the year and just more contenders drop, 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 this will continue to rise, rise, rise. I know I had Elvis in all year last year, but I think it's going to be like the Elvis case for a lot of people where... They're like, no way. And then like stuff just starts to fall down the totem pole. I'm like, okay, I can come around to it. And then like, oh, it's getting three or four nominations. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, it's in my 10. So right now I have it out. It's at my number 15, but I can definitely see the case for this getting up to like number eight, number nine by the time we hit December. So I gave my top 10. I have two from A24. I have two from Warner Brothers. And then I have Apple, Neon, Amazon, Netflix, Universal, and Searchlight all there. And as mentioned before, I do have a 5-5 five -five split between previous nominees and first-time nominees, those being Past Lives, The Zone of Interest, The Color Purple, May, December, and Anatomy of a Fall. So I, I mentioned those 10 holdovers. Those are kind of my top 11 where make your order anywhere you want. Those are the ones I really feel like are contending. Some other big hitters that I don't really see the case for right now, but they're next in line. Barbie of Color Purple drops, of Dune drops. If Barbie is just that good, yeah, maybe it can come up. Netflix, yeah, they have May, December. We know it's good. But if they put their focus elsewhere, they have Maestro, they have El Conde, they have Rustin. One of those could come into the conversation. Sony, in addition to Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, has Dumb Money. Paramount has the Bob Marley biopic, One Love, where that becomes an actor contender. Maybe like The Whale, it gets in the conversation, but I still think this probably falls out at the end of the day. And then there's some few other movies that you'll he see here on the screen. Just none of them are really speaking to me at the moment in this top 25. That makes a lot of sense. Honestly, checking out a lot of your list, there's some stuff I disagree with. I think Bob Marley, One Love is Whitney Houston, I Want to Dance with Somebody. Maybe. Uh, round two. One thing that I am surprised isn't even in the top 25 is Next Goal Wins. 
I, I think that that deserves maybe a little bit more credit than you're giving it. Same with Nyad. I think both of those should be at least in the top 25. But honestly, if you're looking at this list, once you hit, I would say Bob Marley and Down, those are just movies that are here. I know the case is for, but I'm not very strongly feeling about it. Bob Marley, yeah, it could be Whitney Houston, but it could also, like I said, be The Whale, where it's just this big acting performance, but I still think it will come up short at the end of the day. Um... And yeah, I hear about Nyad. I just had, I think The Killer is another Netflix movie that should be on this list somewhere. It's David Fincher. Even when he's not in picture, he still picks up yeah. nominations here and there. And uh, Ferrari could be a massive bomb, but also could be another dad movie that is bulletproof from the critics and still gets a little bit of technical love below the line. But uh, enough yeah. about Best Picture here. We, we'll talk more about Best Picture in all these other categories. So Matt, give us your Best Director lineup for the month of June. Here is my June Best Director lineup. I'm feeling relatively solid about some of this at the moment. Uh, actually, weirdly enough, I feel more confident in my predictions at this point this year than I think I ever have this early in the That's year. That's good. I, I, I just feel good about my reasoning for a lot of things, and I could be totally fucking wrong, but I just feel like my logic at this point is solid. And I, I, I'm definitely going to be wrong, but I just feel, I feel like I'm on the right track with some stuff. So, number one, a lot of people are going to disagree with me here, but I've got Blitz Bazawule for the color purple. Now, reasoning being, if I have the color purple winning best picture, it needs to win either director or screenplay. Is it going to win screenplay? No, it's not. Uh, could it win director, though? Yes, that's much more likely. We saw in the trailer, it looks like it's going to be using a lot of long takes, which is great for cinematography, it's great for director. It looks like it's going to use and intertwine some magical realism elements, which is going to be exceptional in this. It looks like they're kind of reinventing how a lot of these song sequences happen. I have a feeling that this is just going to be uh, such an undeniably like lovely film that people are just going to really respond to. And the vision behind it as they keep promoting with the color purple they keep saying this is a fresh new take it's a bold new take is actually the words that they use and a bold new take on this material i think will be enough to win best director also there's of course the uh, correlation between best cinematography and best director which links up like quite often and if we think that color purple could win cinematography we should give it credit in Best Director because it's a great correlation. At number two, though, I've got the safe pick here. This is the Steven Spielberg of this year where is Martin Scorsese ever going to be number one? We might think that he is because we might say, oh, it'd be really nice to reward Scorsese again. But no, no voter actually thinks like that. No voter is going to get out there and go like, oh, well, it'd be really nice to award Martin Scorsese again. No, they're going to watch the film say it was great. But... It wasn't his best film. And am I going to reward him for what was not his best film? No. I mean, people still talk about The Departed and they say, you know, I really wish Martin Scorsese didn't win Best Picture for that film. And, like, that's the attitude people are going to have about Killers. No, that makes a lot of sense. There's a little part of me that did want to move Killers to number one just because of the reactions. But at the same time, the reactions are also what held me back because people were saying this was his best in a long time. They just weren't saying it was his best of all time. That's what keeps me at having Killers at number two in a lot of categories at the moment because part of me does think this could be like – like you were saying, some people say like, oh, we want to give Marty another one. And I mean – the man is getting up there in age. The time is kind of running out for him to get another one. But like you said, that's not how people think. Unless he comes out and says, no. this is the last one, I don't think it will happen until then. Well, I've got Jonathan Glazer at number three right here. Uh, Jonathan Glazer for the zone of interest at number three right here. And the reason being behind this, I mean, there is always an international slot in here. And I think Jonathan Glazer's vision behind the zone of interest is going to be enough to get him in here. I mean, this film sounds incredible in how it's put together and how distinct and unique it is just in construction. Is this win competitive? No, because it's not going to hit people in the heart. And there's going to be some people that fucking hate this movie some people will hate this movie with a passion um but but i think that uh, there's gonna be enough passion behind him 
to get him a nomination at least, even if he's not win competitive. At number four, though, I have Celine Song for Past Lives. Past Lives, I actually, I've warmed back up on as it has maintained its 96 on Metacritic on release. Uh, I think this is going to remain one of the biggest films of the year. I think that A24 has finally struck a time when they can get two into Best Picture because both of them have the critic passion to make it in. So Past Lives actually would be my number two in Best Picture. It is my number one in another category that we're going to talk about pretty soon. Uh, and ultimately, just overall, I really think that they're going to put a woman in this category again. I think that they are going to continually kind of bounce back and forth between being like, are we learning our lesson or are we not? Uh, I think she's going to have a great narrative to get in as a woman in this category this year. Uh, so, And her film has the strength to get in. So that's the most important thing. Past Lives is very strong. It is top five, which means that she should absolutely be top five. I agree with all of that. Who is your last one? Number five, best director. And at number five, I have Alexander Payne, The Holdovers. The whole reason behind Alexander Payne here, I know you don't even have him in your uh, top 10 for best picture, but in uh, in director, I mean, personally, I have The Holdovers at like number three in best picture because I think it can win the TIFF People's Choice Award. I think that it is win competitive for Paul Giamatti in... Uh, in Best Actor. I think it's win competitive in Best Original Screenplay. This one, to me, feels like the populist movie that is going to make it into Best Director, that a lot of older people are really, really going to love, really going to connect with. Uh, Alexander Payne has been nominated in this category in the past, even when his films are not very directing heavy. And I think the same thing is going to happen with The Holdovers. I think the director's branch just really, really likes Alexander Payne. And if this movie is in Best Picture, and if it is in my mind, as it is, top three, then, yeah, it's totally in here. I, I mean, that makes sense. I have Universal's Other Horse in the Race as my number five in director, but you're a lot lower on that movie, so, you know, a little a little flip-flop yeah. here. So A little flip-flop. Following up uh, my top five, though, I'll, I'll slam through these a little bit. Number six, Denis Villeneuve for Dune Part 2. I don't think that he's going to get in if he didn't get in for the first one, but... Uh, there is an argument for the second one because there will be the overdue narrative of, oh my god, we snubbed him last time. But that said, they're not awarding this type of direction in Best Director anymore. Then, at number seven, I have Justine Trier for Anatomy of a Fall, uh, being another international director that could possibly make it in here. Uh, currently, Jonathan Glazer is my one in there. I don't know if there could be two. Last year, I think there were almost two because we had Ruben Ostland make it in and Edward Berger, who was just on the outside. And Justine Trier, I think if we're considering Anatomy of a Fall as a possible best picture contender, it should be even higher than it is in picture, in director. This one should be very close to your top five if you're considering it as a best picture player. Uh, then, number eight, Yorgos Lanthimos for Poor Things. Now, Poor Things looks like a massive directorial achievement, but that said, this is pretty stacked this year, and I don't know if I see Poor Things being a top five contender, uh, and it might just be weird enough and a little alienating to a point where some of the voters that would put it in Best Director are going to be going for Jonathan Glazer or going for Justine Trier instead. So Yorgos Lanthimos is on the outside there. Number nine, Todd Haynes, May, December. This one does sound a lot more like an acting showcase, a lot more like a script movie than it is a directing movie, which is why I've got it all the way down at number nine. And then at number 10, Christopher Nolan for Oppenheimer. Uh, now, Oppenheimer, I am much lower on than most people, but I think if there's one category above the line that it's got a very good shot at, it would be actor. And if there's two categories that it has a, a great shot at above the line, it'd be director. I don't really see Christopher Nolan making it in here. Again, I, I think that this film might be not divisive, but just not beloved in the way that it needs to be to get all of these nominations. But I do think that his, uh, his dedication to film, his dedication to doing things for real, I think that could uh, be a great narrative for him, which is why I've got him at number 10. Yeah, at least for me, I, uh, those outside looking in, Cooper sounds he I'm I'm warming up to a maestro because I think you got to look at your predictions as like you can't look at them in a vacuum. You have to look at them from category 1 to category 23. And if you have Cooper an actor, you have hair and makeup for maestro. 
you probably should have Cooper in your top 10 for director. And then at that point, you probably should have Maestro in your top 15. I, uh, but if you're, uh, hitting on, if you're hitting all these categories, it's like – I know I've mentioned this once already. It's, it's like, not all the – it's two categories, well, actor, makeup. It's like The Whale. The Whale was probably number 12 last year, and it was the first one out in screenplay. I know it wasn't the director race, but this is a movie yeah. that's going to be stronger in director than it is in screenplay. So you, you flip those two things. So like, It's like one of those where like – I'm not predicting Maestro for anything outside of those two categories, but if I was, I would have him a little higher. But overall, I, I yeah. like your 10. We have nine of the same 10. I have Nolan higher. I don't have pain in my 10 at all. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see who comes around, who caves to the other side in the months coming forward. And speaking of caving, I did an adapted because I – kind of went on against my word last one. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to move poor things. I guess it was two months ago, but I'm not going to move poor things off my adapter number one. I did. Um, I, I, I think it's still in there for a nomination. Just the winning angle isn't speaking to me as strong as it was before because now we have a release date. Uh, adapter is a weird category this year. Honestly, none of these movies sound like winners to me. And because of that, they can't give Glazer director, so they may give him adapted. Is that a good argument to make? No, it's not. But I don't have a better one because it's not going to Killers. It's not going to Dune. It's not going to Poor Things. It's not going to Oppenheimer. It's not going to Color Purple. It's not going to Barbie. And there's not much else there. Spider-Verse? I'm, I'm not. That's something I'm not caving on. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Okay, here's my argument against Zone of Interest as a screenplay winner. I think it's going to get a nomination but the whole thing about the zone of interest is that it is it's depicting the banality of evil. It shows these characters who are Nazis living, they share a wall with Auschwitz. We never go inside Auschwitz. The mm-hmm. entire movie is focused on this family as they like try to garden and they do interior decoration. Um, it's just about how boring their evil lives are and how like horrible it is that they can live these like idyllic lives building a life for their family as they're taking lives away from other people um hell i'd say the color purple is more likely for a win seeing as the color purple is possibly a best picture winner contender if there's really nothing else maybe they actually go with a musical or spider-man across the spider-verse which is one of the most uh, original movies that could ever come through the adapted screenplay lineup um i think it has the same argument but better that barbie does which is like this movie has so much originality so much creativity and it's being lauded for that so i don't know i i say you should have spider-man in your top five for adapted screenplay because like writers are gonna go crazy for this and if you're struggling to find a winner I wouldn't put it there yet, but I think that down the road it might be possible. I guess using like my big brain here trying to think who's winning the BAFTA at this lineup, Zone of Interest sounds like the best likely contender for that at this moment. So by that logic, the BAFTA winner sounds better than scrambling for something that I don't know what it could win. But I, I, I get your point. I get, I get the argument that it doesn't sound the best on paper. But when something Poor doesn't sound the best on BAFTA. paper— uh, maybe it could. I don't it's know. British. It, it's it also British. It is British. It is British, but they didn't give it to everything everywhere last year. And yeah, no, but they... Equal level uh, weird. I, mean, I, th- I think they gave it to The Favorite over it, Green Book. The Favorite, I think, is a very different type of movie. I don't think The Favorite's a weird movie. It's just, it's just a little different, where, on the other hand, Poor Things is going to be a weird movie. Regardless, the rest of my five is the aforementioned Killers of the Flower Moon, Dune Part 2, Poor Things, Oppenheimer... I don't feel great about this lineup. It seems very, like, obvious, and obvious choices rarely ever come through. But, like, as I mentioned, a lot's just not speaking to me at the moment. Maybe it is Spider-Man, which I have down at 9. Maybe it is Color Purple, which I have at 6. Or maybe it's Dumb Money I have at 10, or something that I don't even have on my list at all at the moment. Well, if you're looking for something outside your 10 that could maybe be in your top 10, Next Goal wins. Where's Next Goal wins? What's your thoughts on that? I mean, you kind of made the case earlier. Uh, critics are going to have the hit out for this. I don't think it's going to be the case yeah. of uh, Grace Beer Run, but I think it will be like Bardo, where it's still going to be a good movie. Just people like, we don't care. We'll acknowledge one aspect of this, and they're going to acknowledge like the acting. And maybe not for a nomination, but they're like, yeah, Will Arnett's great filling in. Uh, we love seeing Michael Fassbender back. We like this ensemble, but they're not going to be like, oh, Taika. We want to give Taika an award because that's what they did with Bardo Lash. It's like anything in Yuritu had a hand in? No. 
bad. Anything he didn't have a hand in, though, we love it. It's great, and I think that's going to carry over this year. Fair enough. I, I have this, of the top five, I've got three of the same five. I have the Zone of Interest, Killers of the Flower Moon, and Poor Things. But I would swap out Dune Part 2. I'd swap that out for the color purple. And I would swap out Oppenheimer for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. That's my top five right there. Well, let's hear your top five for best original screenplay. Ooh, original screenplay time. Okay, at number one, if I've got it at number two in best picture... I should have Past Lives number one in Best Original Screenplay. This is a huge critical hit. It has a 96 on Metacritic. God damn, this movie is going off. It is going crazy, uh, which is why it is my number one in Original Screenplay. If it wins any category, it's this one. Uh, and I think that could be a reason for it to be something that we think maybe could be a Best Picture winner uh, through the year. So Past Lives number one. Follow that up with The Holdovers, which is going to be, I think, a huge audience success. I think critics are going to like it. It's going to do very well at TIFF. I think it's going to win the People's Choice Award there. And if that's the case, original screenplay is in reach. Uh, and then after that, I've got May, December at number three. It's campy. It's fun. It's kitsch. It's what the people love. It's what they want. Uh, and that's kind of the vibe I'm getting from May, December. It seems like... It's going to be fun. It's going to be different. I've read the script for this, and it, to me, it didn't read as a comedy. So I'm really excited to see what they do with it on screen, um, because apparently it's very much the same script. I think I just read it wrong, and so did everyone else that I, I know that read it. Everyone was like, oh, this is like a serious drama. Apparently not. But I think that level of like kind of humor to it uh, is going to really help. I think the acting performances are going to help it in screenplay. I could see this potentially being a win contender, actually, as well. Um, if past lives slips, if the holdovers doesn't win TIFF. So those top three, I think those are all win contenders. Then at number four, I've got Air. Air, even if it drops out of picture, I think it looks still very strong in Best Original Screenplay, also because the original screenplay field kind of, kind of feels thin this year. So Air at number four makes sense. It's a great script. That was the thing that people really loved about this movie as, uh, as they talked about it, was the humor, the... Uh, energy that came from the script, the heart in the script. So Air feels great for a number four slot. And at number five, I have Anatomy of a Fall. Uh, this one, I mean, it's a weak lineup, so that helps it to, uh, to get in here. Uh, but also, it is apparently a very intricately written courtroom drama, a very interesting, twisty-turny thriller. And I think that's going to really, really benefit the movie as it comes into the screenplay category here. I mean, we've already talked about it as a potential picture player, as a potential director player. We've mentioned actress as a player, international feature. And if that's all the case, screenplay should be right there. I have the same five as you. I just have a slightly different order, but I do agree. Past Lives is at number one. And I think number where this category sure. gets... I think what this category is really interesting, though, is that 6 to 10 range is what do you consist that of? Because there's not a lot here, so you could you could make some big reaches, which I have one, I guess, big reach in my top 10, just looking at yours. So I am very interested in hearing your case for your 10, and then I'll mention the one other one that I have. So at number 6, I'm going to put Saltburn right here. Saltburn, I know a lot of people have a lot higher uh, but being, like, kind of a mystery type thing, I don't know what my read is on this one at this point, especially because I feel like there's a risk of the sophomore slump from Emerald Fennell. We've heard good things from test screenings, but test screenings can lie, as they did with Empire of Light last year. I don't know. Saltburn is giving me warning signs, but I'm, I'm willing to be wrong, which is why it's at number six. At number seven, I've got Maestro, and that just shows you how weak this original top ten is, because... Everyone has been saying that the worst part of Maestro is the script. It's directed well, it's acted well, it's shot well, um, and the script brings it all down. That's all of the reports from the test screenings is that it is a boring screenplay. But what else is there? So it's at number seven. Number eight, I have Asteroid City. Asteroid City was a lot higher. But then the reviews started saying either it's Wes Anderson's best movie or people would say that they don't like Wes Anderson anymore, that they love everything else that Wes Anderson's done, but not this. And if you can't get Wes Anderson's fans on your side, 
I don't know if you could get others on, so this one might just be a little bit too divisive to make it in. Number nine, I have about dry grasses. This is interesting because I don't have this in my top five for international feature. Uh, I don't think it's anywhere near that, but I do think it's possible for an original screenplay nomination uh, because I think that some writers are really going to resonate with it, very much going to connect with it. I think it's going to do well with critics. So it's just as good as anything for a top 10 slot here. And at number 10, I have Rustin. Uh, also have not heard great things about the screenplay, so I, I don't know about this one, but at the moment, what else is there? The answer is, I guess, El Conde, which I have much lower than I used to, because we know Netflix's push is May-December now. I don't think that El Conde is going to be the push. As well, I have the creator down here, the uh, sci-fi movie, which I'm just putting in here as like a potential to be surprised by, mm -hmm. but I, I don't actually think that could happen. No, yeah, I, I like your 6 through 10. Uh, Asteroid City, what I've heard is if you like the French Dispatch, if you like Isle of Dogs, you don't like this. But if you didn't like those, you'll like this. So at mm. least someone who really didn't like the French Dispatch, it makes me more excited for this movie. Regardless, though, um, El Conde is one that I can see an angle. Yeah, it's still not Netflix's uh, number one. But we've seen in the past, Netflix can get two. It can get three into a screenplay category if you're weak. Uh, that's splitting between the two, not just all in one. Uh, but uh, the one movie I want to bring into the thing is I know it has mixed reviews, but you mentioned this category is so weak, and the people who it connects with, it connects with it hard, and that is Elemental. And I'm not saying it's going to get a nomination, but it could pop up here and there in this category throughout the season, especially if uh, air drops off, holdovers doesn't hit, or Anatomy of the Fall is just too out there for some people. It, it could it could hit here. I don't think it's number five or number four, but I think it's like seven or eight possibly. All right, Mr. Spider-Verse doesn't have a shot in adapted screenplay. Hey, number 10 in adapted is <laughs> number two in original. Uh, I, I mean, that is true. That is true. Um, but with Elemental, I think the uh, the reactions are, are killing it for me right now, as well mm -hmm. as like knowing it's not going to do well at the box office. I don't even have it in my animated predictions anymore. Interesting. I, I I still think it will do well. I don't think it's going to set the world on fire, but I still think it... I mean, its budget's insane, but it, it will make good money on paper just when you look at the details. But regardless, this isn't a box office. This is an Oscar thing. So if you have made it this far, definitely let us know some of your post can predictions. Do you have Zone of Interest winning above the line? Do you still have um, air in your best picture predictions? Or you're swinging big, taking something very risky into your tent? I'd love to hear it down below. Mm -hmm. But until next time, my name is Dill. And my name is Matt. And this is Fantasy Film Ball.